The intent of this video is meant as an installation overview for fiberglassing the seams of single wall underground fiberglass turbine sumps and should be used in conjunction with the appropriate part specific installation instructions. For complete installation and safety information, refer to the installation documentation for the equipment described in this video and any other related equipment. To ensure your system integrity and safety, it is essential that you follow all applicable installation instructions and the federal, state, and local codes that supersede them. Safety Information To ensure your safety, take these precautions when working with fiberglass sumps. First, wear eye protection. Second, wear protective mask. Third, wear hearing protection, especially if using a power sander while working inside of a containment sump. Also, protect and avoid skin contact. Make sure to wear latex gloves, boots, and cover all exposed skin. And lastly, check with the local regulations concerning confined space entry. Warning. Catalysts can combust under certain circumstances. To help prevent combustion, adequately ventilate areas when working with materials. Do not use near flammable materials. Keep out of direct sunlight. Do not use more catalysts than required when mixing with resin, and do not store rags, used mats, or material that has been used to apply catalyst. Acetone is flammable. Refer to the manufacturer's instructions for complete safety information. Tools required for installation. FG Seam Kit. This kit includes the mat, resin, putty, and catalyst, and we recommend one FG Seam Kit per seam. You also need protective gear. This will include safety glasses, a painter's mask, latex gloves, and a painter's suit. You also need mixing sticks and mixing containers for the mats, resin, and putty. You also need a grooved roller, a 4 to 6 inch disposable paintbrush, and two Bondo knives, one 4 inch and one 6 inch. You also need a 4 inch putty knife, acetone, and a sander or hand grinder. Surface preparation. Sand down the area in four inch tall segments on the two components being fiberglassed together, removing the blue color and getting down to the glass fibers. The fiberglass sump should be sanded using a power sander with a coarse green core 40 grit sandpaper. If you're going to be sanding by hand, use an abrasive medium to make a rough surface for the fiberglass to bond to. Remove dust created by the abrasion process with a tack rag. Wipe a braided area with acetone because this will help mat adhere to the braided areas on the components that are being fiberglassed together. Clean the abraded areas with acetone. The putty and catalyst mixing ratio is 20 milliliters of catalyst per one quart of fiberglass putty. When mixing putty and catalyst, always mix from the bottom up. Mix the catalyst and putty until the catalyzed putty is thoroughly and uniformly mixed with no color streaks. Resin hardens quickly, so have all setup items prepared ahead of time. Spending extra time and setup items prior to mixing the resin will help ensure that you have enough time later to work with the resin before it hardens. Smoothly apply the catalyzed putty with a 4 inch putty knife to the outside joint to the sump while pushing the putty down into the joints. Fill in any open areas of the joint with the catalyzed putty. Create a smooth surface for the mat to bond to by using a Bondo knife to smooth the catalyzed putty around the joint. Make sure that there are no holes or cracks in the putty because this is the layer that creates a watertight bond to the sump. Allow the putty sump to sit for at least one hour in temperatures above 70 degrees Fahrenheit so that the putty can harden. Make sure not to disturb the sump during this time or the sump could become misaligned. Lower temperatures will require longer cure times. Inspect the outside joint for gaps that will cause a problem for the mat when adhering it to the abraded area of the sump. Visually inspect the joint to verify that there are no problem areas cracks, or holes.
with the exterior seam completed, move to the inside seam to prepare the inside surface for the putty to be applied there as well. Using a medium to rough sandpaper, scuff up the inside of the sump, removing the shiny surface of the gel coat area. Once completed, use a tacky rag to remove any dust particles from the area. Then, using a paintbrush, paint on the putty into the crease of the inside seam. Make sure to push putty into the seam to completely seal the area. Also make sure that it is a smooth area so that when the matte material is applied, it will adhere to a smooth area. After the joint has fully cured, lightly grind all previously braided areas, dust them off, and wipe down the area with an acetone soaked rag. Cut several dozen pieces of fiberglass mats to lengths of approximately 24 inches. These mats will be used in the next section, but it's important to do this before mixing the resin to give yourself more time to work with the resin before it hardens. Mix one pint of the catalyst resin at a time, starting with a small amount so that the mixture does not cure before applying it to the sump. Applying resin to mat can be done in several ways. As shown in the video, resin is being poured directly onto the matte material. Another option, not shown, is applying the catalyst resin generously to the puttied sump joint using a disposable paintbrush. Paint the resin to the area on the components being fiberglassed more than large enough for the 24 inch piece of mat to lay on. Apply a fiberglass mat to the wetted area and saturate the layer of mat with the catalyzed resin. First use your gloved hands to position the mat in place. Then, using a 4 to 6 inch groove roller, roll over the layer of fiberglass mat and remove any and all air bubbles. Make sure that the air bubbles are not present in this layer because this is the foundation of the next layer. White areas in the mat indicate the presence of air bubbles. Roll over the mat horizontally and vertically with the roller as many times as needed to eliminate all bubbles. Continue this all the way around the sump, overlapping each mat with the one previously applied. Three alternating layers of mat are needed to be applied to each sump joint to ensure a watertight seal. Resin will soak through the first layer, so don't apply as much resin to the second and third layers as you did the first. Also, clean the roller with acetone periodically so that it keeps rolling freely. Finalize the mat install by spreading some extra resin across the mat. Again, remove any and all air pockets that may be caught in the resin. And as previously noted, please refer to the cure time charts for the appropriate cure times.